I'm going to go ahead. It's 4 o'clock and welcome everyone to our webinar today. This is the first of our fall webinars in the 21st Century Learning Lab, and my colleague and producer, Mary Carnahan, is running our WebEx for us. And she's provided some really important tips on the opening screen. And I'm assuming everyone can hear. I hear clicking, so I'm just a little nervous when I don't hear voices, but I hear clicking. So if you would do me a huge favor, everybody hover under the, or around that green bar and open up your chat window. I see that it's starting to fill up with folks. You want to go ahead and click off of Mary Carnahan, host and presenter, and make your messages sent to everyone so that we can all see you. And then you are good to to jump in there and do your introduction. Like I see um, Dr. Ho and Mr. Cockrum have already begun. Excellent IE Learn members. Thank you so much for doing that. So the reason we want to do this is because these webinars that we're getting ready to launch are really the first in the series of connected educator focused discussions. And so it goes without saying that this is not intended to be a lecture, it's an exchange and that we really do encourage you to be sharing comments and posting questions in the chat box. So Mary, I'm going to go ahead and forward our slide. As I mentioned, this is the first of three webinars that the Office of eLearning is hosting during October's Connected Educator Month. The event is a global endeavor, and it can be followed on Twitter with the hashtag CE14. Hey. Go back there, we're going. There's a cross-country media there. Oh. <laughs> And so we have a, a link that I'm going to drop in the box if someone doesn't meet, beat me to that. But we will um, be sharing all of our events on this link, and we also have a link to the global organization's information. So while we're focusing on Twitter this afternoon, there are new means for becoming a connected learner, and we are sharing those or promoting those through our office. When the Google Plus Communities uh, practice were launched this summer, we had a really great response, but we still have a lot of outreach to do. And so with that in mind, we designed this particular challenge, which is inspired by the amazing race. So you'll be able to learn more about that on the web page, and I can answer questions in the chat window once we get going. Mary, you want to go ahead and advance us? So. Let's see, the Ionian Learn hashtag. That actually stretches beyond Twitter into five different social media networks. And it represents our office's work, but it's much more than that. It's our statewide PLN, or I should say professional learning network, instead of using an acronym. But for this reason, we have put out a call for your videos and photos. Despite the growing network, there are still thousands of teachers who have no idea what they are missing out on. And we want to get the message to them. So you can help us by doing that, by participating in this activity. And so the idea was actually inspired by the DIM network. And again, I will be throwing the, the URL up, which will give you more information on this. But basically, it's as simple as snapping a picture and posting it and um, sharing why, what has Learn enabled you to do. So um, we'll move on, because I feel like I can see I'm trying to watch the chat and talk at the same time. This is not good, but I'm so excited to see more of you jumping into the chat. This is excellent. Continue. So our last slide before I turn it over to the people you really came to hear, um, let's talk about the IME Learn chat for a second. So tomorrow night we begin the first of our CE14 themed discussions, and that will be um, guest moderated by a team from ICE Indiana. So that's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to share the blog link in the chat as well. But there's something uh, more important about um, why I wanted this slide to be shown. You can see when you go to the blog all of the, the archives, past chats we've had, upcoming chats, learn about the moderators. But the two arrows that are highlighting the tabs um, for Twitter lists and hashtags are really why I wanted to share this particular um, link with you today. Because if you are not already on the Twitter list, we need to get you on there. And the same goes for the hashtags. If you're inspired after today's webinar to develop a hashtag, I want you to know that these are two places to go so that you can be connected and as well as find others to connect with. So with that being said, it's time to bring our guests on. 
We have two districts today that will be sharing the process they went through to make um, Twitter a successful part of their school culture. And so first up, I'm going to introduce or turn it over to Michelle Eaton and Pete Jest from MSB Wayne Township. Thanks, guys, for being here. Absolutely. Um, I'm Michelle Eaton, and I actually have our superintendent, Dr. Butts, with us uh, with us today. He was kind of the man with the plan when it came to Twitter. Hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, all right, so we can go ahead and get started. Mary, if you want to switch the slide. Um, we developed the We Are Wayne huh. Can you all hear me? I can. It's breaking in and out. I couldn't. I had to use my cell phone. I couldn't figure out how to use the phone at the office. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It just told me to unmute my line again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, and, and Dr. Bus might have something else to to say here, but this started a long time ago, before our Twitter chat even started. So. Um, he began when he would tweet, add that hashtag to it. So this has been a few years in the making, just for full disclosure. I think this um, this really, the, the hashtag for us um, became part of our district culture. Um, and it was uh, our, our theme, We Are Wayne, um, was embedded before we began to really utilize Twitter as a social media communication tool uh, throughout our community. And so. It made uh, it made sense, at least in my mind initially, to begin to add that as our hashtag. And it has it, it took a little while um, because it's a little bit longer than some hashtags. And I know that's a, a cautionary with 140 characters. You want to be careful not to make your hashtag too long. Um, but we we did um, utilize that hashtag because from from a, a, a culture standpoint and a, a district model standpoint. Um, it, it really tied in the themes that we were trying to incorporate. So that's where that's where our hashtag was developed, um, and um, we have some others out there that some of our schools and some of our departments use. Uh, but this is really our district hashtag. So if you want to move forward, um, when we started getting a presence on Twitter, there and starting a Twitter chat in general, there were a lot of reasons for us wanting to do that, um, but. First and foremost, we want to connect our schools and our district with the community. We also think uh, there's a lot of value in learning from each other. So um, as our technology department works with teachers and we discuss the importance of a professional learning network, of connecting with other teachers, um, we also think it's good to practice what we preach. So um, by, by starting a Twitter chat, by starting thinking of ways to get our teachers connected with each other, um, it was a great way to model and to help them learn how we can use social media to um, be connected educators. From a district perspective, and, and for those uh, out there, that obviously um, when you have modeling going on from either district level administration or building level administration, it helps to embed the utilization of uh, a resource like Twitter into the communication of what's happening in the district. and so. Uh, about two years ago, uh, I made it uh, an expectation for each one of our buildings to have a Twitter account. Um, I didn't care who ran the account. I didn't care what they called the account. Um, it was first about making sure that all of our buildings had an account. And then over time, the expectation became that they would um, tweet out important information uh, to their parents and, and, and look for followers. And obviously, the students are now engaged. I had, a, interestingly enough, I had a student, I was doing bus duty at one of our elementary schools after I had met with uh, the staff in the morning. And one of the students came up to me and, and introduced himself and, and um, asked if I knew who he was, and, and I didn't recognize him. Uh, but he shared with me that he followed me on Twitter, and so I was able to pull out my phone and and uh, go right to his account and and see kind of his Twitter activity. And that's one of the things that I do as a as a superintendent when I have a student follow me, which tends to happen a little bit more when the when the snow starts flying, um, because students are real interested to know first when school's canceled or delayed. And I do that through actually Twitter is the first medium that I use for to communicate that to our community. But I'll have um, I always go into our students' accounts um, and look at their past Twitter history. Uh, and if their Twitter history is suspect, uh, if I don't like what they've been putting out on Twitter, um, I'm likely to block their account um, from 
uh, from me. So that's another way that we work on digital citizenship um, as as a, as a part of that Twitter conversation that we have. Um, so that's the, that's really the why. Um, moving on, when when we decided that this crazy idea of having a district wide Twitter chat, um, I actually. I feel bad that we're starting and that Noblesville is going to go second because I totally stole the idea from them. Um, we were talking about it. I was sitting there um, with the folks from Noblesville, and I actually tweeted Dr. Butts and said, please, can we do this? Um, the first thing that we decided to do was that uh, we needed to form a team. So um, we met before we got this rolling. We got together a diverse group from around the district that would represent lots of different stakeholders in the district, lots of different areas. Um, to be the, the leaders of this chat, to be the brains and help us get it started. Um, so we met together, filled a room, and we brainstormed different ideas, how, ways that we could reach not only other teachers, but our community and our, our students who are old enough to participate as well. We uh, talked about times, and then we started getting a list of potential moderators together. So this started as a group effort. And um, we kind of planned it out before we got started. There's still there's still some. Uh, we're, I mean, we are very new uh, in this since we've only been doing. It. Michelle tried to get me to do it last year, um, and frankly, we just ran out of a date and time to, that we could block off and say that this was when we were going to do this. And and um, we have made some modifications to that, and we'll talk about that as we go through a, a couple more slides here. But um, it was really trying to get um, topics that are engaging for people and. And I know um, Katie's asked, how do you increase the number of followers? And I think one of the ways is you obviously have to let people know that that, that social media account exists. My account is and my account is kind of the district account, but I also do put a, a few things on there that um, are they're all tweets that are my own. They're not necessarily reflective of the district, but they are linked directly to our website, so people can follow my Twitter feed off of our website, which also helps. But I think when um, you have to make it a valuable resource. You have to put information out there that people are interested in. And, and some of the uh, other superintendents that I follow, when I look at what um, what leads to to them having additional followers, um, it's really about them doing some interactive um, communications with students and with parents. Um, like um, the the person that tweets me the best idea of what to do for um, Friday's football theme uh, or or um, um, you know, the, the, for the pep rally, um, we'll get such and such. Or I've done, you know, the 4,000th follower will get something. Um, or send me your ideas about what to do uh, for uh, an upcoming event. And, and so those are kinds of things that you can really get people more engaged. Um, and, of course, um, the, the more information you put out that is pertinent to the students and to the parents, the more they're going to follow you um, because it becomes important to them. Yeah, I keep asking Dr. Butts if I can be the one to tweet about snow days so I can up my followers. That seems to work. <laughs> yeah, this, if, if you if you decide to be the person to call snow days, you will increase you'll increase your followers exponentially. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, the next step, once we got our team together, was to begin our planning. So when we first started planning, we actually started with. Um, a, a mind map, so one of those things, there's the elementary teacher in me coming out. Um, we started with a mind map, so we thought about all of the different areas, groups, ideas, uh, topics that we could have, and then from that kind of branched out with lots of ideas. This, I think, is really beneficial. I use the same strategy when I'm uh, planning out my blog posts. When I started my, whenever I started my blog, you know, I start a mind map so that I never feel like I run out of ideas for topics. Um, and that's a really great idea, too. It also helped us make sure that we're identifying every area. So we have special ed um, represented. We have our English language learners represented. We have the curriculum team, the technology department represented. So it helped us map out what our um, topics were going to be, what our priorities were. We then used a um, spreadsheet, so a Google spreadsheet, to organize moderators and topics. Um, we just created a basic sign-up that we all have access to so that you could pick a date and um, sign up, ask for additional help. And um, we also, in the planning process, and I, I stole this too, I think all the best teachers are thieves. We take ideas, and as long as you give credit, um, I, I think that's the best way 
to find great stuff, but I found some moderator guidelines that EdChat uses, and I took them and tweaked them to fit the needs of our district, and I came up with a, a list of basic moderator guidelines, because honestly, I think the biggest obstacle for us is getting enough uh, people confident that they can moderate a Twitter chat. If you're if you've never participated in one before, never moderated one, it can seem kind of daunting. And um, so to map out as much information as possible um, helps our teachers feel more confident that they could actually moderate. Um, I also, in the planning process, I've met with most of our moderators at some point and sat down with them and helped them develop questions. Um, if it's their first time moderating, kind of showed them how I do it for the IANE Learn hashtag for that Twitter chat and, and helps them plan. I've also offered to be a silent moderator for them. So if um, they start getting stuck or feel like they're just not doing very well, that I'm there for them to message or for me to pop in and kind of help if necessary. Um, what they find though is it's really not that difficult. And so um, they get going without, without my help, but um, that's been an important part of planning. I'm also make sure that I'm there for all of the chats so that I can I can help uh, model, but um, for the most part, everybody finds that it's super easy and um, very addicting. Our moderators so far are already talking about wanting to sign up again. Um, the audiences vary, and um, Katie asked a, a question about what stakeholders. It really varies on the topic. Tonight's topic really is geared towards parents because we're talking about um, uh, literacy um, embedded with English uh, for the English language arts. Um, and, and we've done literacy for math um, with the young boys. Um, and um, so we try to do some, some targeted um, discussions. Last week we did, which really was a great this, uh, uh, Twitter chat for us, probably our, one of our best so far, which was about parent-teacher conferences because those are coming up. And so um, we looked at it from a parent perspective and a teacher perspective of what makes successful parent-teacher conferences and what kinds of information is best to share and, and those types of things. So the, I think what, one of the things that we're finding in our planning, we tried to look for a night and a time that we thought would be most conducive for people to, to join. And we found that the 7 o'clock time frame actually was a little too early, especially for um, people with young children who are still doing the bedtime routine. Um, and so we pushed back to 8 o'clock, and, and we think that's going to work, we're, but we're, we're going to see. We're going to be real flexible on that. And we started with half an hour um, and probably isn't long enough um, as, as we're learning. Um, but half an hour is, is safe for those who are moderating um, because um, an hour might be a little bit too long for some of the topics we've chosen. Um, and so right now, half an hour is, is working, but um, if we need to expand that to an hour, that certainly is very easy to do so. And um, one of the great things about being on a Twitter chat is you don't have to stay the whole hour if you don't want to. Um, you, can, you can sign off and go somewhere else. Um, Katie, that actually, your question actually leads us right into the next slide really well. So thank you for transitioning us. Uh, but encouraging participation, we have done this um, various ways. It helps when you have a superintendent who has a large following. Um, so he'll tweet out everything. I try to tweet out uh, what we're going to be doing. But we also encourage the moderators to contact uh, folks that they think could be involved in this. So when we were talking about um, literacy for boys, um, our the, our curriculum coordinator that was sponsoring that contacted media specialists as people that might be interested in it. Uh, we talked to several teachers. When I'm helping with a technology-related one, I let our tech leaders um, in our district know that the chat's coming up to, I did, to tell their staff about it. So um, lots of different ways, not just posting it on Twitter, but also um, asking for volunteers, asking for people to come in. Um, we also, kind of related to this, we are finishing up. If any of you have been uh, follow me on Twitter, we did a Twitter challenge this month. Again, something that I stole uh, with permission from another coach in another part of the country. But um, we did a Twitter challenge to kind of introduce our teachers to using Twitter as connected educators. So each day they've had a small task to perform that have gradually become more involved and um, started out with just developing a tweet, introducing yourself, and including the hashtag, and now is ending up with sharing out resources and videos and links, um, and we finish that tomorrow. So that, too, has got a lot of our staff involved, and on Twitter, learning how to use it, learning how to create, uh, how to participate in a Twitter chat, 
Um, so we kind of did that along with kicking off our Twitter chat to, to get more participation. Um, our next slide, Mary. We have some favorite Twitter tools that we are using in our chats and encouraging. Oh, before I go on, chat asked how long was that challenge, how many days? Um, it's a 30-day challenge, and absolutely I would be willing to share the challenge. If you, um, I'll actually put it in the chat when Noblesville comes up to speak, if that's okay, and um, so I can search for it and post it. But you all are more than welcome to take it and edit it and use it with your own districts. I think the more teachers that are out on Twitter, the better it is for everybody. So I am more than willing to share. Um, as you can see from the image on this slide, one of our favorite Twitter tools is TweetDeck. We actually included that in our Twitter challenge, setting it up. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, TweetDeck lets you create multiple columns um, where you can see your notifications, you can do a search of a hashtag, you can see your activity feed, um, you can really customize it. And so we like using TweetDeck when we're leading Twitter chats because it allows us to follow that the We Are Wayne hashtag, allows us to follow our notifications and also create a new tweet without leaving the screen. So that's one that all of our moderators um, are using. And um, several in our district after the challenge shared how much they liked using that tool anyway, just to be able to search for their favorite hashtags. Um, in addition to TweetDeck, we've been using Google Drive for our planning. So we use our Google spreadsheet to keep a list of our moderators. It's how we share our moderator guidelines. Um, actually, we connected MindMeister, which is a mind mapping app. We connected that to our drive, our shared folder, and that's how we brainstormed our topics so that we could do it digitally and share it with everyone. Um, if any of you have heard of Canva, C-A-N-V-A, Canva is how we've been creating our um, ads, I guess, for our Twitter chat. So when we have a chat coming up, several of our moderators will create a Canva image that's easy to share online, and um, you can create a visual way to promote your chat or your topic. Um, I also created one on Canva with basic instructions for how to participate in a Twitter chat. So it's really easy to follow, and someone coming on with not with minimal Twitter experience could get on. I'm also willing to share that out if anybody wants it. I tweet it a lot. Um, as far as using TweetDeck on your phone, I, I don't like it on my phone, but that's just personal preference. It doesn't, doesn't have the same functionality as it does on the desktop. Um, but then we also, I just started this, our last tool that's been um, going to become an essential part of our Twitter chat are our is our blog. I created a blog here recently um, to recap each of our chats so that someone who missed it can see it. I started wanting to use Storify to uh, recap the blog. So Storify is a way for you to pull um, tweets and Facebook posts together into um, one summary. However, it's blocked in our district. Um, and for those of you that use Lightspeed, it's probably automatically blocked for you all too. So we just created a blog, and I'll create um, a summary of what was discussed and take some screenshots of tweets to throw in there to share out for those that missed it. So those are our favorite Twitter tools, Dr. Butts. Did you have any others that I'm missing? No, I think uh, uh, I, I was not uh, – I became a TweetDeck fan as I was preparing to moderate my first tweet, and I'm, I'm addicted. Um, I, I, I have it on every device, uh, and, and – uh, uh, the great part is I can get to one of the things I do find is um, on some of my mobile devices, um, especially my laptops, um, I'm not able to necessarily see the function where I can schedule tweets ahead of time, um, especially when you're looking at advertising your, your Twitter chats. Um, one of the great features within uh, TweetDeck and, and possibly Hootsuite also is the opportunity to schedule those in advance. So. Um, you can go a week out and, and schedule uh, reminders for people, um, and it, you don't have to necessarily re remember each day to send out reminders or multiple times a day to send out reminders to people about those uh, Twitter chats. You can schedule those in advance, um, and that's a, a really great function that I've enjoyed with, with uh, the Twitter chat piece. So, um, And then to our final slide. 
You're welcome to join us um, tonight. Actually, uh, is uh, one of our uh, uh, Twitter chats Tuesdays, eight to eight thirty. Uh, we found the uh, this will be our second week for doing the eight o'clock time frame. It is about uh, um, using literature in English language arts instruction. Um, actually, moderated by one of our elementary school staffs. Um, I think we have multiple people that are moderating that tonight. Um, but one of our elementary schools decided to pick that up, um, and um, we at the hashtag We Are Wayne. So. A shameless plug. We'd love for you to join us even if you aren't uh, connected or affiliated with Wayne Township. But that's all we have. Well, that's probably a good thing that's all you have. I think people are madly taking notes and browsing different tabs on their computers checking all the new things that you were sharing. Thank you guys. Christy, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you. And as Michelle said, you know, Miller Chat or Miller Shift was around first, but everything happens in different time schemes, and it's it's really interesting to see how different districts, different schools are fostering these connected communities. And so I'm going to turn it over and let Christy share more about their process in Noblesville. Hello, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm Christy Steffen. You want to go ahead to the next slide? And Miller Shift is the hashtag that we use here in Noblesville. I'm the technology instructional coach at the high school. Um, I currently support 150 teachers and 2,700 students with iPads. And before that, I was a special ed teacher. So where did we begin? Next slide, please. So last year, we were um, a newly one-to-one -one school, and I went to my principal and said, I want, I want to be able to share on Twitter. I, you know, I've been a part of the Indiana eLearn chats, and I want to share all the awesome things that we're doing, but we need a hashtag. Um, so An Andrew Swickheimer and Jeff Bryant, my director and my principal, went back and forth on email for a long time, and they said, just give me something. And so we decided on NHS shift, and uh, because we talk a lot about the shift in education, we have to be very careful about that. I have misspelled it before, so um, when you are picking a hashtag, make sure that um, it doesn't have a, a bad misspelling. So let's let's see where we're going here. So we wanted to increase our visibility, and um, I definitely had administrator buy-in, which and Wayne, obviously, you definitely have administrator buy-in. Our administrators use Twitter a lot. Um, they were they used it, you know, from the very beginning last year, and really promoting what teachers and students were doing, um, you know. And I think teachers started to appreciate that, and then that kind of encouraged them. If I go into the classroom and say, "Oh, I'm tweeting about this." then they wanted to get on Twitter and see um, what I had said about them. So um, it was a good way to try to get that um, ball rolling. We also encourage our students to tweet. Um, at Millpulse and at Go Millers 2015 are not affiliated with a school, but they are students within our school that tweet um, some great things about what's going on in our school. And um, they actually will use the hashtag MillerShift as well. And um, it's just, it's really exciting to see the teachers and the students and the parents then even um, getting involved with it. Next slide. So um, then the, the rest of the district decided that they wanted to get on board with this. Um, nobody else was one-to-one, -one, but they were going that direction this year, our middle school's one-to-one. -one. So that's when we changed from the NHS shift to the Miller shift. And the other tech coaches, Courtney Caron and Shelly Cooper, um, began sharing what was going on in their buildings. And other um, administrators started getting on there, and um, it really started to take hold. I created a list of all of the administrators, teachers, and coaches um, in Twitter, and then we posted that on our website so that you could see a stream of everybody that was posting um, from Noblesville Schools. And it, it's, it's really kind of, you know, got everybody out there, and you can see all the other teachers and coaches and really um, learn about what's going on in our district. So on to the planning. I can't take credit for our first district 
Twitter chat. I actually thought Courtney was crazy when she said, let's do it on our own. We, you know, we participate in Indiana eLearn. I think that our district can do this. I was a little skeptical. I didn't know if we could get the buy-in from the teachers. You know, we had a lot of teachers on Twitter, but could we get them all together um, at one time, you know, to participate in something? So we all, um, you know, got to, the, Courtney, Shelley, and I, and uh, Andy Swickheimer, our director, all uh, met and started brainstorming ideas. We didn't have quite the amount of um, people in the, the room that Michelle did, um, but between the four of us, we, we started planning, and, and really the planning is a big part of it. We planted the, the ideas first, and then who would um, produce the chats, who would moderate the chats, and what kind of questions we'd ask. And you definitely have to make sure that you have your questions ahead of time, always have extra questions, always have answers or, or kind of responses that you would um, like to promote um, additional conversation about those. Then we promoted those through email. Um, we each sent an email to our, um, <laughs> we, uh, it's really distracting to have the chat window up there. Um, so we, we had our um, administrators promote it in faculty meetings, and we advertised it through Twitter and email and our blogs, and we just go up to people and say, hey, I know you have a lot to contribute to this topic. Can you please join us tonight? And, you know, everything is the um, going to getting those relationships, and people want to help you out, and so then it helps them and everybody gets more connected. So a little bit more about the planning. Again, our coaches decide the topic. Sometimes we'll have guest moderators and, um, you know, bring in other people if we think that there's something. And we actually had Dave Burgess come to our district this summer, and so we had a follow-up Twitter chat last month, and he actually jumped in um, for a little bit. Our, we do a lot of searching and stealing and borrowing questions that we like from other chats and, and kind of reworking those to help us. Um, we, only, we do it once a month, and we do it for an hour on Tuesday evenings. And Troy's asking how much time between announcing your first chat and when it happened. We Probably about a week. We really don't, we don't give them a whole lot of time, and then we really hit them hard the day of because, like everyone else, um, you forget if you if you learn too too uh, if you know it too early you don't remember. So we really you know give them a week out and then um, really the day of a lot more information. Um, we did get some students to to participate last year. At the end of the year, we had a a good um, conversation. I can't even remember what the chat topic was. But I had a lot of students that were following me, and I said, hey, T-shirts to the first students that, um, that respond in the chat. And we actually had a couple students, so we then um, we gave them, we had Miller Shift T-shirts made for um, Digital Learning Day last year. So we gave them Digital Learning Day T-shirts, and, and they really liked that. And, you know, kids, kids will do anything for a T-shirt. So, uh, but it was good to get them in there. And actually, then I think we got a couple of them to actually uh, chime in on the Indiana eLearn chat the, that next Thursday. So um, just, a, you know, getting a lot of good information um, from, from all perspectives. So let's talk about the chat night. We always begin with reminders in the help documents, and it, just as the Indian eLearn does, um, and I'm not a patient person, so this was hard for me to always be patient because you think, oh my gosh, nobody is going to join tonight. So um, just be patient. People will be on there. Um, I always I love TweetDeck. That you guys were talking about TweetDeck earlier. I, I always have my TweetDeck up, so I have my stream going. And if I see a, a teacher or an administrator tweeting about something, then I will tweet right at them. Hey, why don't you join us? We're talking about this right now, you know, and, and, and just call them out right there on Twitter. And a lot of times they will join, and, and so, you you know, you can get more, more people in there that way. I do post our chat archives on um, Storify. Well, I use Storify and then post it on our blog, and that's what that um, 
Google URL is all of our, um, our chats archived there. Um, okay, so additional thoughts. Include people outside your district. We are Wayne. You know they they were just saying that today. We actually have alumni like that that have participated from all over the country, and that's fun. You know to to talk to those people and show them what we're doing now. Getting parents involved. And um, I found that there are a lot of lurkers. I'll come into work the next day, and somebody will make a comment, and I'm like, but you weren't in the chat. And so just, you know, encouraging them to just say one thing, just, you know, participate a little bit. We're doing some online um, professional development right now, and one of them is becoming a connected educator. And that's one of the things we require of them is, you know, participate in the chat and show us that you've done that. Another thing is that um, we have an elementary school principal who has taken this to the next level. He actually did a Twitter challenge um, the before school started his teacher work day and they they had to go through the community and watch their twitter feed for clues on where they needed to go and what challenges they needed to complete and that was their first teacher work day and it was wonderful that same principal has actually offered um, teachers a jeans day if they participate in the Twitter chat. It doesn't cost anybody anything and it kind of gets people talking hey why are you wearing jeans today you know and um, so that's been fun. Our, our principal really does a good job of, of noticing when people are on there, when sharing good ideas, and we'll say something about it in meetings and other times. The, the thing that has happened that's so awesome with the Miller Shift is that we've connected teachers across our district. We have 10,000 students. I don't even know how many teachers we have. But a, a first grade teacher doesn't know what's going on at the high school and vice versa. But we've been able to connect teachers through Twitter and say, hey, this teacher is using that application. I know you wanted to find out more about it. Why don't you talk to them? You know, and they, they, they learn so much more. And I think it's actually helped us to become a closer district to be able to connect through this way. And our shameless plug, next Tuesday, October 7th, for Absolutely Amazing Apps at 8 p.m. Okay, I talked really fast, but do you guys have questions? We do our chats once a month. So this is Michelle again, Michelle Green, and so I wanted to make sure, I'm going to do my own shameless plugs now, if you don't mind. I'm going to say that in exactly one month, October 30th, we are going to do our, from school-wide, from hometown to statewide Twitter chats. And we're going, we've often had plugs where at the end of INA Learn chat, when we do our wrap-up five minutes, um, during the summer particularly, we do a, you know, shameless plugs. Uh, section and people will just promote them, themselves at whether they're conferences or sessions they're presenting or a blog post that they've written. And what we want to do is we really want to encourage districts that have twi uh, Twitter chats like Noblesville and Wayne Township to come into the INE Learn Chat. And basically, it's going to be kind of a, a showdown who has the most peeps represented, and we'll, and we'll have some fun with it, but it will also be a chance to share. What are things that your district are discussing? How can you get ideas for uh, new ideas? What is of value to your stakeholders? So I am going to see if there are any questions popping up. Anybody want to come on and just talk? Because sometimes it's easier to ask your question rather than to type it. So if that's me. Michelle, there's a good question on here. This is Christy again. Chad Hyatt said, what was your thinking in determining the hashtag? Well, we, talk, we had been talking a lot about shift. Um, and then Miller is just our, our mascot. I, I didn't really say that. So, um, but again, you definitely want to make sure that you search your hashtag ahead of time and make sure that nobody else is using that already, um, you know, when you come up with something. Um, so that was a good question. And actually, that's really good advice too, Christy. I cannot tell you how important it is to, to check your hashtags, uh, even for those simple misspellings too. 
Katie, I saw that you added your hashtag. Please definitely go to the INA Learn blog, and I put the, the link in there a couple of times. I can do it again, but use that Google form to add that if I don't already have that listed on the blog, because I think that might be a new one I haven't seen before. And I think that's a, a great point that you make, too. You know, the mo your mottos, um, your mission statements, all of those things really lend themselves to using, you know, creating the hashtag, making it unique and meaningful. And I, I love that the We Are Wayne, I remember the first time seeing Dr. Butts tweeting at a TD session where um, they had taken some pictures. Everybody was on their, everybody were on the, they were all on their devices tweeting away, supposedly. Um, but there was just a flood of We Are Wayne, and it was all very much focused on what was important for those teachers to be discussing that day, and it really powerful stuff. So when you, when you focus on why you're doing what you're doing, um, it makes sense. This is Jeff Butts. From a district, from a district perspective, um, we were very intentional, and, and I, I probably was um, um, pretty inflexible with the hashtag We Are Wayne because there were a lot of other ideas and some others that could have taken off. But for us, it really became um, part of the broader branding and marketing that we were trying to do in the district. And I think um, when you choose your hashtag, um, just like Miller Shift or Decatur Proud. Um, it really can be more deeply embedded in so many other things that are going on, and I think that helps to, to make a better connection um, with the participants, with your community, um, and, and it, it does truly become a part of the communications for your district and not something separate and apart from. Good point. And I want to add to, um, to that and kind of going back to the point that Kay just post, posted, there is a webinar coming up, and I believe it's from All for Ed. I need to go back and look at my notes. But it is about just that, getting your district story out in public using Twitter. So very purposeful. And I believe that is tomorrow. Um, so I will look for that and tweet it with our hashtag. If I don't find it before the end of our chat to put in the, or the end of our webinar to put in the chat box. Any other questions? Okay, well, with that, then if we are finishing up early, we don't want to keep anybody because your time is valuable. Mary, you want to go ahead and um, take us to our wrap-up business? Since you are still with us, you get a sneak preview of the Office of eLearning's uh, web page. This is actually not live yet. It won't be released until tomorrow morning, but we do have some pretty big things coming up in the month of October, and so we wanted to share that with you. If you're not familiar with our office, or how to reach us online through the web, I will um, very quickly grab our URL. It is just the DOE, basically, and adding on the back of that, eLearning. We'll stick that in our chat window real quickly. And um, the, big, the two big things are, for those of you who are familiar with Summer of eLearning, those applications are going to go live, and also for any of you who survived last winter, you can understand the importance of looking at the virtual option for inclement weather, and those will also be opening as, as well. There are, there's more information on what's entailed with that flex waiver, if you would, that application, but all of that information will be available on the web tomorrow. So um, definitely would like you to have that information. In addition, ongoing applications are open for the digital content cohort. If you're interested in that, you can actually go to our webpage tonight and you can click on that and start that application. Very um, brand new program, very important work that's being done. And it, there's also a connection that you can currently uh, link to and that is the online communities of practice, um, which will be actually part of our CEM, CEM celebration. Mary, you wanna go ahead and flip? And so as we mentioned, there were three webinars. Our first is now behind us, but we have two more coming up, and the second would be the, related to that weather, the inclement weather uh, application. So right in the storm out, we will have some districts who successfully did that last year, sharing how they went about doing that and the things that they learned in the process. 
And then towards the middle of the month, we will have building and growing a PLN. Much like today, really great resources for districts that want to support their faculty in becoming more connected. And I believe we've got one last bit of news, and that is our Thursday night chat. It mentions already that we have guest moderators from ICE Indiana. ICE Indiana is having their annual conference this, month, this coming month in October, and so there will be more information shared on that. We do have a new meeting time. We meet now at 9 Eastern. And so um, you can sneak in a little nap after work. It's always helpful. But uh, this was a time that was voted on by the people. So the request was to meet later, and that's what we're doing. And I think that brings us to our very closing message, which is stay in touch with us. And there are lots of ways to do that. As you can see, there's our web page again, the Learning Lab, which is where you are right now, as a matter of fact, and where you will be able to find the archive of this webinar. And then we actually, um, I didn't even think to tell you, Mary, we should have put Instagram on here too. So we're all across the board on social media. You can find us throughout uh, the different spaces, almost always by just searching INE Learn. That's our, our personal brand. And in Google Plus, because we don't have a personalized URL, you would want to search the IDOE Office of eLearning to find us. But that is all for tonight, so unless someone would like to add anything else, we'll go ahead and thank you for being here.